Let's turn our Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 10 through 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 10 through 13. It should be a familiar message to many of you. The title of the message is Christian's Judgment. Christian's Judgment. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 10 through 13, Christian's Judgment. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he had done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God. And I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. For we commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that ye may have somewhat to answer them which glory in appearance and not in heart. For whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God, or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. Brother Nathan, can you please pray for the message? Father, I pray that we keep this message to heart, Lord. I pray that we understand that one day we're going to give an account to you for everything that we do, Lord. And I pray that we really pay attention, Lord, because the times are coming, Lord. But as the days go by, it's only sooner that you're coming back. And, and we kind of grow kind of cold to your return. Lord, I just pray that you just be there, Pastor Jay, Lord. Convict us, Lord. Yes. Speak to him, Lord. I pray all this in Christ Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Christian's judgment. Many times people move because there's going to be something to be judged upon. You study at school because your academics will be judged. You try to get good grades so that when admission people look at your transcripts and work and everything, they judge based upon it. At work, you know, your works are judged before your promotions or anything else. In relationship, your effort and your sacrifices are judged by your loved ones to see if you truly love me. So one thing common for everyone is that whether you're saved or unsaved, you're going to be judged. You're going to be judged after you die. You know, if Lord comes back early, you know, after the rapture. But one thing for sure is that you cannot get away from that judgment. You know, we have a lot of fugitives out there. They're running away from the law because they don't want to face that judge. They don't want to face that judgment. You have a judge waiting for you. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. You could run away from him. You could reject him. You could do whatever you can. However, whether you're Christian or non-Christian, you will be judged by the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we look at this verse in First Corinthians, Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. First things first, this is for only Christians. You know, this judgment is for Christians only. So if you are not saved, if you're not a Christian, you'll be judged as some other judgment called white throne judgment. Great white throne judgment. That's waiting for you. If you are at that great white throne judgment, Let's turn to Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20. Let's all go to Revelation chapter 20, verse 11. If you will be standing at that judgment, you have no chance. You'll be sent down straight to hell. So you have to realize, you have to think, you have to understand, where am I going to be standing? Am I be going to be standing at the judgment seat of Christ? Or am I going to be standing at the great white throne judgment? And if you don't know where you're going to be standing, then you must make sure that where you're going to be standing. Because that determines your eternity. Revelation chapter 20, verse 11. The Bible says, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, 
small and great, stand before God. And the books were open, and another book was open, which is a book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is a second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So if you're in that judgment, you're going to be cast into the lake of fire. Let's go to chapter after Revelation 21, verse 8. Revelation 21, verse 8. The Bible says, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and idolaters and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars. You know, Bible says all liars. You tell me you never lied in your life before. Certainly, I've lied before, and I will lie again because I'm not perfect. But as a human being, you are all liars. Then Bible says you're included in this group. And all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. Again, what was it? Which is the second death. You can't avoid it. That's why we preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. So that as a member of this list, verse 8, whether you're fearful, unbelieving, everything in between, and all liars, as sinners, if you do not solve all your sin problems, you will end up burning in the lake of fire. You're burning hell forever and ever and ever. And there's no if and buts about it. Your good works cannot erase all the lies that you've ever done. Right. Your money to the church, praying to God, to, you know, doing everything that you can to be a good person will never erase your past. Right. It will never get rid of what's going to happen. That's why you must get saved from this place called Lake of Fire. You must get saved from burning in hell for all eternity. Then what must you do? You must realize that you are a sinner on your way to hell. Amen. If there's no problem in your life, if you think everything's perfect, you don't need a savior, then there's no hope for you. Yeah. But if you know that you are a sinner, you don't know where you're going after you die, and you want someone to save you, there's help for you. That's why Christ died for your sins on the cross, shedding his precious blood. Then what must you do? You hear this millions of times, especially during this time of the year. You know, you hear this different versions of hymns everywhere, yeah. right? They commercialize it and then they put more beats to it, you know, make it a, you know, we get songs here and there. But what's the point? They're singing about Jesus Christ. You know, birth of Jesus Christ. I mean, you could talk to brethren here, you know, it, it, December 25th is not exactly when Jesus Christ was right. born, okay? Right. You know, it's a paganism coming That's from right. it. Well, a different story. Amen. But you know, back maybe in the fall, September, October, you know, sure. going back that time. Yes. But, but it's a good time to talk about it, though. Yeah. It has people's interest. Right. Christ died for all your sins on the cross, shedding his precious blood. All you have to do is realize that you are a sinner on your way to hell. You know, turn from your own ways and turn to God. Easy. I mean, that's repentance, yes. right? Change of mind. Then if you have that mind where I want Lord to save me from hell, I've been worrying about burning in hell for all my life. And as I get older and older and I, as I see what's going on in the world, I really need to know where I'm going after I die. Then Bible says, but God commended his love toward us. In that while we are sinners, Christ died for us. So Jesus Christ died for you. Then what must you do? But as many as received him, to them gave you power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. You must receive him in your heart as your Lord and Savior. Bible says in Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The Bible says not just the good people, not just the wealthy people, not just the bad people. The Bible says whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Right. Then that includes every single one of us. Yes. Then what must you do? Call upon the Lord. Ask the Lord to save you from hell. Today. That's it. Yes. 
I mean, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. There isn't much that you need to do. Because for by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. It's a gift. Christmas time. Yeah. People are waiting to receive gifts. Yeah. As little kids. They can't wait. Do they expect to do something back to them? No. They say, thank you, mommy. Thank you, daddy. Thank you, grandma, grandpa. Thank you, aunt, everybody else. You know, thank you, neighbor. You just receive and you, you're happy with it. Yeah. This salvation is gift from God. Not by works that any man should boast. You, ha- you just have to receive it with a thankful heart. I mean, he's a loving God. He's a loving father. He did everything for you. Everything was done at the cross. Nothing more. You're already condemned to death and burning hell. So you, don't, you, know, you, you, you have choice to go to heaven, but you already are on your way to hell. Then you must accept, you must trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Then you will have eternal life. Then you won't be standing at the great white throne judgment. But you'll be standing at the judgment seat of Christ. Why is Judgment seat of Christ is so important because it's your judgment, it's my judgment. Right. It's judgment for Christians. Yeah. However, new versions of the Bible change the word right. from Christ to God. People already know about God's judgment. They refer to it as the great white throne judgment that we read in Revelation 20. I mean, until... You know, I came to our church until I learned about some doctrines, you know, from the King James Bible. Yeah. I didn't know there were two judgments. Yeah. I mean, obviously, there are more judgments in the Bible. But when it comes to white throne judgment, I was like, okay, that's God's judgment. But there is a judgment waiting for Christians. Right. That's judgment seat of Christ. But how would I know if I'm using a Bible that changed all those words? It changes the, and then they, Bible characters don't believe in the deity of Jesus Christ. They don't believe Jesus is God. I mean, that's one of the reasons why they change it, yeah. right? Yeah. But as a Bible believer, if you are a Bible believer, you believe that Jesus is God, Amen. then as God himself, he's going to judge you. Yes. Let's turn to Romans chapter 14. So there are a couple places that talks about judgment, seat of Christ. Romans chapter 14, verse 10. Romans chapter 14, verse 10. Romans chapter 14, verse 10. The Bible says, Romans 14, 10, But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Written to Christians. Every one of us shall give account of himself to God. As we saw on 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10 and 11, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, good or bad. So it's true that even if you do bad things, you got to be judged. Even if you do good things, you're going to be judged. Everything that you've done after you got saved will be judged. Your thoughts will be judged. Your actions will be judged, and everything in between will be judged. And that's a fact. That's according to the Word of God. Have you thought about that lately? Man, I'm going to be judged for what I'm thinking right now. I'm going to be judged for everything that I've thought since I got saved. I'm going to be judged for every action that I've taken since I got saved. I mean, if you got saved, you know, last week, like Brother Moss, I mean, you don't have... One week, right? So probably you didn't. You could probably look back and see, you know, hey, maybe some of the things I need to confess to the Lord, get right with the Lord. But if you've been saved for like tens and tens of years, maybe 30, 40, 50 years, you know, like Sister Jen, I mean, oh, wow, I got a lot to go back to and think about. That's why one of the things that Christians have to do is you have to judge yourself daily, Amen. right? 
you have to go to the Lord and you have to make sure that you get right with the Lord of yeah. the things that you've done. That's why 1 John 1, 9 is a critical verse for our Christian life. You know, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord is willing to forgive if you come to him for forgiveness. Simple as that. It's just like loving father. If a child does something wrong and he comes back and comes to him sincerely and says sorry, you know, you forgive the kid, right? I mean, of course, you'll be judged for what you did, though. You know, that's how you rebut your soul. But for eternity, it will not be brought up. It will be gone. It will be erased. That's why, as a Christian, you and I have to think about this judgment. Why? Knowing the terror of the Lord. You know, Apostle Paul said, it's going to be terrible. When we say fear the Lord, we don't say give him respect, right. honor him. Yeah. It's literally being scared of him, yes. being terrified. Yes. Simple as that. The judgments of Christ, you and I should be terrified. Because think about it. As I describe it, who is going to be the judge, number one? That's Lord Jesus Christ. Almighty God in front of you and judging you. I don't know about you, you know, even in just normal s civilian life, you have to stand before a judge, even if you didn't do anything wrong, it's nerve wracking, right. right? Because that judge has the power to determine sometimes your freedom, sometimes your finances, sometimes your relationship, and everything else. Yes. But this judge we're talking about, Lord Jesus Christ, creator of the universe. Think about it. I mean, God himself is looking at you and about to judge you for everything you've done after you got saved. If that doesn't strike fear in you, it's healthy fear, by the way. Amen. It's not about, you know, unhealthy fear of because you did something wrong and all that, but this is healthy fear that, just like when a child has a healthy fear of their father, who's gonna spank him right. if they you know, break the glass while eating that cookie they're not supposed to, or you know, steal the money from mommy's wallet, right? Or daddy's wallet. You know, they don't do it because they know they're gonna be spanked, or they're gonna be disciplined. Right. That's healthy. It stops you sinning. Yes. See? The fear of God is healthy because it will stop us from sinning. Amen. If fear of the Lord doesn't stop you from sinning, there's no hope for you, right? Yeah. You're, you're at a backslidden state. You don't care about anything. It's like your conscience is seared with a hot iron. Right. So you have no feelings, you know. But many Christians are in that state. Then, as I describe this judgment seat of Christ, you know, the tear should start creeping in your heart. And healthy tear. You know, because every Christian is going to be present. You know, I mean, everybody. People who's ever been saved, you know, they'll be present at that judgment. Millions and millions, yeah. right? And when we, I mean, verse 14, 11 says, for as it is written, you know, as I live, said the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. Every Christian, you and I, we will be bowing down, confessing, and giving our account. <laughs> you think, you know, you got to be like just standing like, here, Lord, this is what I did? No. You'll be confessing and bowing. Probably because it'll be hard to see the Lord eye to eye. Yeah. Right? You're so shameful and you're so ashamed. When something is so pure and holy... Imagine, right? You're in a room, spotless. You know, your, your wife, your husband, your children, you know, whoever, clean the spotless. And then you're very careful of touching anything, right? Maybe your hand's not clean. You don't want to touch that wall. You don't want to touch that table. You don't want to leave any mark. But Jesus Christ is perfect. And he's God himself. And he's going to be judging you. There's no way in the world you're going to be just lifting your head high and like, Lord, you know, judge me. No. 
you're going to be bowing down, confessing to the Lord. Probably you and I will be shaking our legs, you know, like those tree branches out there. And I'm like, oh, Lord, 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 please have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. That's the description of judgment seat of Christ. It's coming. And it's getting near and near, you know, as time passes by. How are you preparing for the judgment seat of Christ? And then Dr. Ruckman described it very well. Many Christians at the judgment seat of Christ will receive a bonfire. Bonfire. Yeah. What happens at the bonfire? You're at the beach, you're at the campsite, at the bonfire. Things just burn. Yeah. Things burn, right? Everything that you've done for the Lord will be burned by fire. If it's bad, then it will be burned just to smithereens, nothing. If it is good, you have reward. It will be purified as gold, silver, and precious stones. And it will be given to you in the form of crowns. Think about it. You know, when we praise the Lord, we want to throw crowns at him. But some won't have any crowns to throw. Yeah. What's that one crown I always talk about every Christian to receive? Right? Crown of righteousness. You expect the Lord to come back today. You seek the Lord to come back today. Yeah. Uh, that's not hard to do, right? I mean, especially if you're close to the Lord, even tiny bit, I know for sure that you want the Lord to come back right now. Yeah. Then you receive crown of righteousness. I mean, every one of us should receive it. And as a, you know, our church, if any member does not receive it, man, shame on you. I mean, that's one crown that every Christian should receive. However, there's going to be a majority who just receive bonfire at the judgment seat of Christ. <laughs> Everything will just burn up and burn up. Big fire. Then why? Why? Let's list some of the reasons why you will experience bonfire instead of receiving rewards. First thing, number one is that motive has a lot to do with it. Your motive in serving the Lord, if it's not the right motive, then everything will just burn up. For example, your church attendance, you're here today, right? Church attendance was to please the family or someone. That's why you're here. It's going to burn up. I mean, are you here to praise the Lord? Are you here to praise God? Are you here to get closer to the Lord? Are you here to get something out of the message? Right? Or are you here just to please somebody? Right? It happens a lot. You know, if a boy likes a girl and girl goes to a church, he follows, you know, just to please that girl, right? Or, you know, people get engaged, you know, and I'll go to your church, you know, if you marry. I mean, <laughs> yeah, if you marry me, right? But after the marriage, they're gone. They never show up. What was their motive? Right? It was just to please someone and soothe someone else's conscience. And when you give tithe, right, you don't give it with a cheerful heart. You give for tax deductions, right? And then you give to show to people that I give this much to church. And this one's pretty bad. You have whole shelf of Bible translations everywhere. Even though you know King James Bible is the perfect word of God, you refuse to believe it and be like all this, you know, scholars out there, Bible rejectors out there. And those are the Christians who's headed for the bonfire. Yeah. Your motive in serving the Lord is for your own selfish reasons, is for other people's selfish reasons. If you don't do it, just for Jesus Christ, it's gone. If I lead someone to the Lord just to show off to people, that reward is gone. Yeah. I mean, thank the Lord that the person gets saved, but for me, it's gone. If I preach for the reason of recognition to get my name out there, 
It's all gone. The Lord's not going to bless it, right? right? You teach just to tell people that I have the position as a Sunday school teacher, your reward will be gone as well. Right. You have to understand what your motive is every moment, every day. The thoughts that come to your mind, what's the motive? Then when you think about every line item, as they say when they look at the invoices, <laughs> your life's invoice will have line item for every second of your life. Yeah. And if you live like 70 years times 365 days times 24 hours Millions. times 60 minutes times 60 seconds, what is the math geniuses out here? You know? <laughs> I mean, if you can calculate that right now, you know, yeah, yeah, I'm sure it's going to be maybe millions of lines. Yeah. Then you have to give account for every single line. Can you imagine? I mean, I'll be terrified. Yeah. I mean, over here, what happens if we break some laws, you know, you could possibly face jail time, right? But how many you know, laws and ordinances, and how much do we disobey the word of God? And every one of them, will give, we have to give account. That's why before you get to that point, Christian, judge yourself. That's the solution. Amen. You have to judge yourself. If you judge yourself right now, those sins are forgiven. Again, you have to pay for it, but it won't be judged. Then you must get right with the Lord. If you and I are at the judgment and we are only headed for the bonfire, you and I will be the most disrespectful, ungrateful child of God ever. If someone loved you enough to die for you on the cross, shed his precious blood, the least you could do is try to do as much you can to please that person. Amen. And then if you try to do the least you can to please that person, then you're going to have a cleaner, right relationship with him. Yeah. Which means one of the things that you have to do is confess your sins. Try to be pure. Try to, to be holy. But if you don't even remember last time you went to the Lord and confessed your sins, and again, don't get confused with, you know, going into a room with a Catholic priest and confessing your sins. No, you're going to God the Father. After you trust the Lord Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, you're going directly to Him. Amen. When was the last time you went to Him and truly looked at your life, looked at your everyday thoughts and actions, and confessed your sins? I mean, everything. It's not about big ticket items always, right? You know? I, like the Revelation 20 and 8, I, mean, I don't know, maybe you did some sorcery, okay? You got interested in like those witchcraft and, you know, you bought a Ouija board or Ouija board and then, you know, you try to play with it, you know, try to be a, you know, those things. Okay, I know many of you guys don't do that. But for other things, you know, your wrath, anger, needless, yeah. right? Lies. Right? Yes. Not sacrificing yourself. I mean, if you know what's the right thing to do and you don't do it, that's a sin. Amen. Right? Yes. I mean, you know that you have to do something for your family, but you're too lazy and you don't do it, that's a sin. Right? right? And if you could read the Word of God, but you're too lazy, yeah. that's sin. Amen. Because the command says what in 2 Timothy 2.15? Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly divine the word of truth. Yes. It's a command. Amen. And that's a command that I guarantee almost every single Christian will give account of themselves to. Yes. Do you give your all to study the word of God? I mean, all. I mean, God gives the opportunity. And don't, we have to be balanced as well. You know, Lord's not expecting you to not go to work, just stay in a room. And just read the Bible and study 24-7. No. When the opportunities come, you work. Do your best at your work. Do your best at school. Do your best at home. And also, 
do your best when it comes to the Word of God. You have to have a balance. And if you know that God has given you free time to study the Word of God, but you spent it all in watching movies or dramas and stuff, then you did not use God's time wisely. And it's not your time, it's God's time. You're bought with a price. Once you trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior, He's your master. Amen. You're like, I don't care about what the liberals say, progressive says. No, my master is Lord Jesus Christ. You trust the Lord Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, He's your master. And think about it. You have to answer to your master. You have to answer to your Lord. But He's also your best friend. Right. Man, what a friend we have in Jesus. Amen. Man, you know, at a work environment, the best bosses are who's great leader, who's a, also a great friend, yes. who understands everything that you're going through. He lets you know when you're doing wrong. He lets you know when you're doing right. But Jesus Christ is God himself who does everything. He's including in the, including the every single holy category as well as the best category. When you're going through hardships, who's there for you? Sometimes it's not your mom. Sometimes it's not your daddy. It's not your wife, your husband, your children. It's not your counselor. It's not your psychiatrist, psychologist. It's not your politicians, obviously. right? It's the Lord Jesus Christ. He's there to comfort you. Yes. I mean, that's why there's Holy Ghost inside of you. And you could talk to him about everything. Amen. You know what's, what's wrong with Christians nowadays? They look for an outlet where they want to let it out. Oh, yeah, I got to talk to pastor. I, I, not that I don't like it, but before you even come to me, you got to go to the Lord. Yeah. Talk to him first. I mean, you got to go to the Lord. Let it out. And the Lord's going to give you, you know, he's going to lead you the right way. Yes. Like, think about it. If you have some family issues, right? If you have a marital problems, right? You know, psychiatrist A, B, and C or counselor A, B, and C is not the first option you should go to. And they're not the best options. Right. You should go to the Lord first. Yes. And, of course, I'll be there to assist in any way according to the word of God. You have to let yourself out to the Lord. That's why many people don't know about judgment and state of Christ. And many people, many Christians don't care about judgment and state of Christ because they're not close to the Lord. If you want to think about judgment and state of Christ, if you want to do well at the judgment and state of Christ, I mean, don't you want to be called well done, that good and faithful servant? Yes. If you want to hear that, you have to be closer to the Lord. How can you know that what that person likes unless you're close to him? How can I know what my wife like unless I'm close to her? Right. I mean, if you are not close to your mom and daddy, say you don't know. I mean, you never talk to your dad, right? He's never home, you know, and you're never home, or you do your own thing. Times cross, and you never talk to each other. 18 years later, you become an adult, and someone asks you, what does your daddy like? I don't know then how are you going to know what to do to please him? Yeah. Same thing as Christians. You're, you're, you're saved. You're not going to burn in hell. You're going to go to heaven. Thank God for that. Yeah. But life after getting saved is all about what you do. Right. It's all about how much effort you do. You I mean, plug in for capitalism, right? You'll be rewarded for how you do. You won't be rewarded for what your mommy did, what your daddy did, what your wife, what your, you know, husband, your children. It's up to you. It's not up to me. It's up to you. That's why, contrary to what some other folks say, you know, to Bible believers, you know, once save, always save, and so go out and live like the devil, you know, because you're going to heaven. That's totally false. Right. And that's not the model that you should have. I'm going to heaven no matter what, so I'm going to live like the devil. No. Okay. It, something's going to happen to you. Yeah. You're going to get weak. You're going to get sickly, and you might die early. Right? That's why you don't want your flesh, your, you know, everything that's concerning you to stop you from getting ready for the judgment seat of Christ. 
Who wants to be shameful? Who wants to be ashamed in front of everybody? Who wants to be ashamed in front of everybody being naked, right? I mean, none of you. No. Not I. But man, at the judgment seat of Christ, there's going to be a lot of shame. A lot, a lot, a lot of shame. Can you imagine you're up in heaven and Lord play everything just like how he plays for the unsaved man at the white throne judgment. As a Christian, he's going to play everything. He's not going to miss a second of your life. Everything. Everything that you ever thought you tried to hide from people, all the secrets that you ever had, that only you knew will be played. I mean, can you imagine? How can you not just fall down on your knees and put your head down and just bow down? Yeah. I mean, when all those things are plain. And as a judge, what do judges do? They detail everything that you had done wrong. You know, when you see those you know, letters by, I mean, the, I guess, what is it, judgment letters, right? They're like 10 and 20 pages long. I mean, they have to detail everything. They can't miss everything. You could go ask, you know, prosecutor sitting back there. You have to detail every everything. Wow. You had this secret sin that you've been hiding from people. Don't think that you could get away with it. You could get away with it during this lifetime, maybe, but in the judgment seat of Christ, you'll be revealed. Yeah. Everything will be revealed. So you have to get right with the Lord. And you have to stand in there knowing that you'll be humiliated. Yes. I mean, Lord went through it for us on the cross. You will go through it. I will go through it. This humiliation is nothing. You know, like say, you know, you, you came late to a meeting, right? Because you overslept. And there's like, Thousand people, and they're like all laughing at you. Oh, you know, you know, you know, you overslept and stuff. This is totally different. This is you're being humiliated in front of Almighty God because knowing that what you could have done, you didn't do it. Knowing that what you could have accomplished, you didn't do it. Knowing that what pleased the Lord, you didn't do it. I mean, how much pain and suffering and shame and humiliation did Simon Peter have when he denied the Lord thrice? He went out and wept bitterly just for that moment. But what about you? Everything you've done after you got, I mean, after you got saved, it only took Peter to wept bitterly just for that. Why will it take you to wet bitterly? Because I guarantee you and I have done a lot worse than Apostle Peter. A lot, lot worse than him. Yes. And you think there's going to be preferential treatment? Lord is fair judge. And he is just God. Amen. Which yes. means you and I will be judged for everything. That's why it's not too late. You know, this time of the year, we think about Lord Jesus Christ, and everybody talks about baby Jesus and Jesus this and that, right? But you and I need to think about where we're headed. We have to think about who's going to be our judge. We have to think about terror of the Lord. We have to think about our relationship with Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, are we close to him? Are you close to him right now than ever before? If Think about it. If I'm going to meet a person that I've waited all my life to meet, and it's getting closer and closer that I'm going to meet that person, I'm going to get myself ready for it. I'm going to get a nice haircut. I'm going to wear a nice you know, suit or clothes. I'm going to be as presentable as possible to meet that person because I waited all my life. And I'm going to study. I'm going to know everything about that person. 
because that's the person I wanted to meet all my life. Amen. And that person should be Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. I mean, are you dressing yourself properly? Are you talking properly? Is your heart ready for him? Come on. Right? If you're not having a right relation with him on a daily basis, then that's going to be a shocker yeah, right. at the judgment seat of Christ. Right. We, we, yeah, I think the hardest thing for any criminal to deny is someone plays the CCTV, exactly what you did. <laughs> There's no if and buts about it. Yeah. But you stole it. I mean, that's you right there. We will never, ever be able to justify and deny at that judgment. All you and I will be trembling in total humiliation and shame and just full of regrets, regrets after regrets. What could I have done? What should I have done? Man, how many of you lived through regrets in your life? Mm. If you could go back in time, if you could choose three instances in your life, probably you 100, right? But if you could choose three instances in your life and you have chance to go back and change it and do over, man, you give everything you have to change it. I would. But you have chance right now, from now on, to make sure that you won't have to regret at that judgment. Wouldn't it be great if you and I, after today, starting right now, really get right with the Lord, and ask the Lord to help me, help you remember all the sins that we've committed Amen. since we got saved. Let the Holy Spirit help you, intercede for you, and get right with the Lord. And then start the new chapter with a clean sheet. Yeah. Man, that's the best thing. But it could only happen if your heart is ready to do it. Not your mind, not your little tiny brains. Your heart has to move. Is your heart willing now to really get right with the Lord? Think about judgment, set of Christ, and think about pleasing Him. And rewards will come your way. And I don't have time to go through it, but just remember, there's crown of righteousness, crown of incorruptible crown, there's crown of life, there's crown of glory, there's crown of rejoicing. And treasures, I would love to throw a bunch of crowns at my Lord and Savior. Amen. Only way you could do that is thinking, preparing, ready for the judgment seat of Christ. Let's pray. Dear Father, this time of the year, we hear a lot about you, Lord. However, we tend to just let it go Think about it just commercialism and really don't think about our judgment waiting, Lord. We know unsaved people are on their way to hell and we witness to them, we preach to them. However, do we preach to ourselves about our oncoming judgment? At that judgment seat of Christ, there's going to be a lot of humiliation. There's going to be a lot, a lot of shame. And what could have been as you play every second of our life after we got saved, whether it be good or bad? Lord God, help us to take it more seriously, Lord, from the bottom of our heart. Think about the judgment seat of Christ. Think about the terror of the Lord. And think about how close of a relationship we have with the Lord on a daily basis. And judge ourselves on a daily basis. Lord God, I pray that you bless everyone here and those who are listening. And those who aren't able to make it for various reasons, especially being under the weather. Lord, heal them as soon as possible. And bless the rest of the service today. And number one, Lord, even so come, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right.